Stress and strain are the basic building blocks of mechanics of materials, and in our lecture today, we are going to discuss about stress. We have learned so far that mechanics of materials studies the internal effects of forces acting on a body, including the internal distribution of the forces and the internal deformation caused by the forces. In order to evaluate the effect of forces within a body, appropriate physical quantities should be defined to measure the internal forces and deformations. A topic of study is the amount of deformation in a solid body, and another topic is how the force is distributed within a body and how much is the intensity of the force at different locations. In engineering mechanics, stress is the physical quantity that measures the intensity of internal force within a continuous body, while strain is the measure of the deformation of the material. We commonly refer to stress and strain in our daily life, but our understanding of these terms might be different from the technical definition in engineering mechanics. In fact, there are several physical properties in engineering that should be described precisely to avoid confusion. For example, consider feather and steel. Which one weighs more? Steel may seem the obvious choice at first. But in reality, the answer depends on the quantity or the volume of steel and feather. Why is this question prone to tricking people? Because of the well-known intrinsic property of steel, which is greater than that of feather, the density. While weight or mass depends on the type and amount of matter, density just depends on the type of material being examined. Steel has a higher density compared to feather, but it is not possible to answer which one weighs more without knowing the quantity of the materials. Now consider two rods, one made of wood and another one made of steel. If both rods are subjected to a tensile force at their end, which rod is stronger and can resist more load? The rod made of steel or the rod made of wood? Similar to the previous question, the steel rod may seem the obvious choice. But the answer depends on the dimensions of the steel rod and the wood rod. A force which is just capable of breaking small steel wire is likely not capable of breaking a bigger lumber. But similar to density, there is an intrinsic property of steel which measures higher strength of steel compared to wood. In engineering, stress is a physical quantity that measures strength of materials. Steel can resist a higher stress level compared to wood, regardless of the dimensions. But it is not possible to say which rod would resist more load without knowing the dimensions of steel rod and the wood rod. Let's look into this concept from a different perspective. Consider you are supposed to carry someone's weight on your body, and you were given two options to choose from. A heavy weight wrestler and a skinny person. Which one would cause less pain if they step on you? At first, someone may immediately say the wrestler who seems heavier would inflict more pain. But in reality, the weight of each person alone doesn't determine the intensity of pain someone may feel. The intensity of force or stress depends also on the area over which the force is applied. The person wearing heels may cause more pain despite lower weight if the ratio of weight divided by the shoe's area is higher than the heavier person but with higher area of shoes. After reviewing some examples, it is time to define stress in engineering language. The physical quantity of stress at its simplest form is defined as the intensity of internal forces in a body that expresses the internal forces that neighboring particles within a body exert on each other. Stress in a very small particle with a cross-section area of delta A, an internal force of delta F is calculated as force divided by area. If the stresses are uniformly distributed on a section, the stress at every point on a section is equal to the average stress. Thus, for simplicity, average stress is defined as the total force F divided by the total cross-section area A of a section. From now on in our course, the word stress simply refers to the average stress on the section, unless specified 
otherwise. Stress is typically designated by Greek letter sigma or ta. The common unit for stress in SI system is megapascals, which is equal to one newton force divided by an area of one squared millimeter. Pascal and kilopascal, or kilogram over squared centimeter, are other common units in this I system. In the U.S. customary system, PSI, which is one pound over one squared inch, or KSI, which is one thousand pound over one squared inch, are common units for stress. For normal stress, where the force is perpendicular to the cross-section area, stress is considered as positive if in tension, which means the force is outward from the section and is stretching the element. A force inward to the section that compresses the element is producing negative normal stress. When determining sign of normal stress, it doesn't matter if the force direction is right or left or up or down. If the force is compressive, it is producing negative stress. And if the force is tensile, it is producing positive stress. In the next lecture, we dig deeper into the concept of stress and look into different types of stresses. But before that, let's use the concept that we have learned so far and solve some engineering problems. I will put links to two videos here. One of them presents examples about the topic that we just discussed about, and the other one is the next lecture in which we talk about different types of stresses. Thank you very much, and I'll see you on the next video.